So, uh, good morning, and thank you for coming to our technology overview session. I'm David Polkowski, uh, founder and CEO of Use Medical, and we are going to talk about software-driven guidance and verification for minimally invasive spine surgery. And the tagline you see here pretty much wraps it up. That's the bottom line. All you need is a regular mobile C-arm and the Views PC running the Views software, and that's it. That's the guidance and verification complete solution. So, what is the concept? The concept is to provide, during x-ray guided surgery, the images that surgeons need most and currently with x-ray do not have, namely the traditional navigational views, axial and sagittal cross sections. And we do that by each time a new x-ray is acquired, automatically detecting the surgical tools just standard tools, they need not be modified in any way, shape, or form. They have no sensors, trackers, markers, references, whatever. So it's just image processing. We detect the tools in the x-ray images, and the other part of the algorithmic work we do is register that to the x-ray image with a 3D of the same skeletal portion as seen in the pre-op CT. By doing those two things, we virtually implant, so to speak, the tool in the 3D space of a vertebra, and then we can slice the image any way we want, axially, sagittally, whatever. And all of it is done real, online, real time. When we started five years ago, these computations took one hour. Today, they take three or four seconds from the time you acquire an X-ray, and probably by next year, it'll be a second or two. So it's online, real time. So all of these things that you, don't, that you see here, respectfully, you don't need. You don't need the markers on the tools. You don't need the reference. You don't need the camera and the lines of sight. You can have an OR more equivalent if you want in the OR for uh, post-surgical uh, verification or for doing the planning instead of on the pre-op CT, but you don't really need that either. So what are you left with? A mobile C-arm and the view system. That's it. That's the solution. All there is here in the cart is an off-the-shelf PC and an isolation transformer. And by the way, by now we have the system running on a laptop as well. And that's all it is, a mobile C-arm and the Views PC running the Views software. So that's really the setup. You see the Views screen, it merges, and we shall go over that in detail in a moment. It merges the visual information from the X-ray and the CT into an integrated 2D, 3D world. The pre city is loaded, preloaded, be it via DVD or network. Uh, supine position, unlike uh, legacy navigation systems, our guidance has no prone supine issues with the position of the patient. So it's a standard pre CT, supine position. And we grab the x-rays in real time from the video outport of the x-ray cart. Currently, we support uh, X mobile x-rays with uh, flat detectors from all four major vendors, Siemens, Philips, uh, Siemens, GE. We've done categoric work with all of them. If needed, we shall go back in the future to legacy image intensifiers if those are still around. But we support all flat detector C-arms. And you see the view system. It's just a PC and a large touch screen. I'll go over the workflow real quickly, first in uh, discrete steps and then uh, in a short movie. So, standard CT scan, as we said, supine position. Our planning is done on a laptop, can be done anywhere. One of the requests we had from surgeons, beyond the general, please, please, please keep it simple, don't change anything, stick to our current workflow, and if you can, avoid lateral x-rays, so we don't need lateral x-rays, we do only generally AP x-rays, I'll talk about in a moment, and keep the planning simple. So you'll see the planning of video in a minute. All it is is marking the insertion lines and along each line, the skin level point, the pedicle endpoint, and the target point. That's it, it's a matter of seconds. So that's the uh, planning part. Next is the procedure side. So in the OR, as we said, regular mobile C-arm, unmodified tools, nothing else. No in OR 3D, again, you can if you want, but it's not needed. No cameras, no markers, no references, nothing. Um, we need not, when I said before that we need no laterals, our APs also, they need not be true AP or Ferguson or aimed for each specific vertebra. 
It's just general AP can be tilted, caudally, cranially, RAO, LAO, just what we call generally AP. So that also uh, helps a lot because you don't really need to aim the C-arm too much. It just needs to be in a general AP position. So we typically use one or two AP uh, shots, general AP, uh, for seeing where to do the incision. Our planning, all the planning we did in paraphase each time we acquire a new x-ray is projected on that x-ray image, show them the current viewing angle of the x-ray camera. So you'll see that better in the movie in a moment, but basically with a single x-ray, you place a scalpel, you see where the incision should be, you make it. I think it's something that surgeons first thought, and that you'll hear them later, ah, you know, maybe we need it, maybe we're not, but turns out to be very useful. Uh, and next we insert a gem sheet D, take one generally AP x-ray, the planning is projected automatically on the x-ray instantly, so you can see where your tool is relative to your planning. In order to create the first 3D effect, we need two x-rays that are at least 10 degrees apart. So we take a second x-ray, and then we generate the cross-sections. So now we see the tool virtually displayed on the corresponding cross-sections, axial, sagittal, of the vertebra. So those two x-rays are just for the initial 2D to 3D registration. Once the trajectory is set, we need only one x-ray each time to update the depth of the, of the tool within the vertebra or the implant. And we don't care about the particular angle. It's, there's no need to remember the prior exact angle we used and, and acquire images from the same angle. Again, the system doesn't care, okay? All it needs is images. All it, it processes image pixels. That's all it does. Okay, so that's the workflow sort of in discrete phases. Are you more or less with me so far? Yeah? Okay. So let's now, uh, this is the three-minute video that describes the operation of the system. So regular CT scan, as we said, supine position. This is the planning. The same laptop, by the way, now runs the views procedure as well, if we want. Very minimalistic planning, just drawing the insertion lines. Of course, you can do more than that if you want. Uh, simulate screws, uh, we'll have uh, the rod simulated, that kind of thing. But the minimum is just drawing the insertion lines, skin level, pedicle in, target point, automatic measurements produced by the system, and that's it. You're done with the planning. That planning is now married to the CT data, becomes part of the CD data. In the OR, we generate a roadmap. We call it a roadmap image from the CT showing all the tools that you planned before. And we do them one by one or two in parallel, as Dr. Finkelstein will show later. First, we do the incision. So you see the scalpel relative to the plant incision site. You know where to do the incision and start the insertions. Some generally AP view, as I said, can be a bit caudal, cranial, RAO, LAO, just generally speaking AP. You see the tool relative to planning, uh, automatically projected on the x-ray image from the current viewing angle. Uh, what Dr. Schiffer is doing now is rotating the CRM a little bit uh, caudally and, and acquiring a second x-ray. And now you can generate, three, now you have 3D, uh, 2D, 3D cover registration, and you can generate the cross sections. So we see that um, the cross sections, that the trajectory is not optimal. You probably did that on purpose because normally you hit it <laughs> correctly right away. But for making the point, the cross sections can show you that you are a little bit off in which case um, we correct the trajectory, uh, regenerate the cross sections, so now we have a trajectory accepted, uh, and each time we acquire a new x-ray, we um, just, each time we insert the needle further, we just acquire another x-ray, and the depth is automatically updated, and the notches show you how far you still have to go, like 10 millimeters or whatever. So it can be very, very efficient in terms of the use of x-ray. Then we do the tool exchange, K-wires, pedicle screws, et cetera. The same process is repeated for the other, uh, uh, for the other three pedicles as well. So you can see those one by one, the same methodology. And just for the purposes in all of our cadaveric workshops, as well as in our clinical trial that Dr. Kainan will talk about, we do a 3D spin to compare the synthetic images that Views has generated to the real uh, uh, 3D uh, situation. And the comparisons, I think you've done many hundreds of cadaveric insertions and by now 14 clinical patients. And, the, and that's also the type of data we provide the FDA with and the comparisons are always uh, extremely accurate.
Um, so that's it. I'll move on. So what is the idea here? The idea and how Views was born? Because when we looked at the market five years ago, we sort of said, what's happening here? I mean, we, I personally have been in navigation for 27 years now, and we said, what's happening here? Uh, optical, legacy optical navigation, infrared, stealth station, et cetera, has been FDA approved for 27 years. ORM, 17 years. Spinal robotics for 11 years. And still the vast majority of inventions, 10, 15, 20, 25 years later, is being performed manually under X-ray, whereas the technologies listed above, approved for many years, are still being used primarily for large inpatient surgeries. So for short segment X-ray guided surgeries that account for 70 or 80% of interventions, there has been, of course, a lot of progress with respect to surgical techniques, tools, implants, etc. but almost nothing with respect to guidance. And this becomes more and more critical because as you aim to go inpatient, outpatient, ASC, etc., minimally invasive, more reliant upon X-ray, so our observation was that the market really needs x-ray plus something, and that something should provide better accuracy and consistency and still preserve the workflow, the simplicity, the flexibility, and the affordability. And Views aims to be that something. That's really the essence of it. Our market positioning, I'm almost done, uh, is we're not competing with a million, million and a half dollar hardware intensive uh, Holy Trinity, so to speak, and navigation, CT, and robot for large inpatient uh, surgeries. We are aiming for the 70 or 80 percent of the market that are currently done manually under x-ray. And we want to increase their uh, accuracy and consistency very, very much while preserving the current simplicity of x-ray, the affordability, and the tool neutrality, which is entirely configurable. It's all controlled by software. Our journey is like building a chair with the four legs. That's how I always think of it. So one leg is the technology, one leg is the clinical data, one leg is the intellectual property, and one leg is the regulatory. We have FDA clearance. We received it in January. S1 through T7 stabilizations, fixation, fixation infusion, augmentation. We're in the midst of our clinical first clinical trial in Israel. You will hear about it in a moment. We have patents worldwide. In the US, we have already five granted patents, including our basic workflow, as well as our combining our technology with machine learning, with augmented reality, with other things that you've been hearing a lot about. Uh, we are nearing the FDA submission of our next product version. And in that version, as I said, we should be supporting mobile C-arms from all four major vendors, Siemens, Philips, Siemens, and GE. This is our team. Uh, we have, I mentioned 27 years, we have two prior endeavors in adding computer guidance to common manual inventions. First one was called Super Dimension in bronchoscopy. It belongs to that Metronic, reached at its peak, I think about a, a 1,000 sites. Second one, our latest one, is called Sync Vision. It's in coronary catheterizations. Today it's part of Philips, and it's installed in over 2,000 cath labs worldwide. So that's really it. That's my contact info for uh, further information. I'll be here throughout the rest of the day. And now I'll introduce Dr. Kainan, Dr. Ori Kainan. Good morning. So my name is Ori Kainan. I'm going to be talking to you about the <clears throat> first in human trial we did at Rambam. Now ours is a pretty, pretty large hospital, the biggest trauma center in Israel. The, the purpose of the trial was to test for the safety, performance, and user experience of the VIEW system. Uh, it was, of course, approved by the IRB as a, it's a first in human trial. Uh, the patient population was patients who were scheduled for either kyphoplasty or some sort of MIS percutaneous screw insertion. And these are the demographics. So far, we've, had, we've enrolled 14 patients, nine males, five females. So far, we've done, uh, <clears throat> these are the, the ages ranging from 20 to 89. So far, we've done uh, seven kyphoplasties and seven percutaneous screw insertions uh, for a total of 44 screws. And you see the, the distribution of the pathologies. It's uh, mostly trauma, 10 of them, and four of them for degen disorders. Now some case examples, this is our first patient. It was a 39-year-old male with degenerative spine disease scheduled for MIS L34 T-lift. 
And what you see here on the, the upper left-hand corner is the, the first image we take with the pre-op plan superimposed. And what you see in light blue there is the position of the K wire as compared to our pre-op plan. And on the bottom, just below that, you see the, the real-time floor that the fluoroscopic machine took. And then immediately after taking two AP images, like David said, we can see simulated trajectories of our uh, Yamshidi in both axial and sagittal views, just based on two AP images, which to me is still magic, uh, but that, that's how it works. And then for the purpose of the trial, we immediately did a 3D spin to see that the location of the K-wire, which we inserted through the Yamshidi needle, is exactly as simulated by the system. And uh, it is exactly the same. Then we insert the screws and we do another 3D spin to ensure the position of the screws. Again, this is for the purpose of the trial. Later on, when this is improved, all of the 3D verification it will not be necessary, it will be an option. And again, for the left-hand screw, the L34, same idea. Second patient was a minimal, inv minimal invasive uh, percutaneous fixation of an L4 fracture. Again, you see the pre-op plan on the left as compared to the real position of the, of the K-wire in real life. You see the simulated axial and sagittal views. 3D images showing exactly the same position as simulated. And finally, the 3D scan of the screws exactly as positioned as, as proposed by the system. No deviations at all, exactly the same position. Finally, uh, an L5S1 here. What you see here is something a little different. You see that if we deviate a little bit from the pre-op plan, the system shows us that we are. You see the, the little blue at the tip of the you see this little portion at the tip of the yellow trajectory that shows us that in the plan we're supposed to be a little deeper. So we can fix it, we can leave it as it is, but the system can tell us if we're deviating from the plan and we can fix it accordingly. And then again, after we're happy with the position, we do the 3D scan to make sure that it is as simulated. Finally, a kyphoplasty, what we do is we, we simulate the position of the K wire Verified it's true and we inject the cement. So in conclusion, so far we've enrolled 14 patients, uh, 44 screws, seven kyphoplasties. The system is safe and accurate. Every time we verify the position, it's exactly as simulated by the system. Uh, when compared to, uh, to, the, to the images simulated, it's exactly no adverse events were encountered in any of the patients. The learning curve is extremely short. What you have to understand is it's a very simple system. I mean, the pre-op plan, we do it on a laptop. It takes about three minutes. And then we go to the OR and we do a couple of AP images, regular instruments, nothing, nothing special, just the way we normally would do it. And then we get this generated 3D simulation. And it's very simple, not, not a lot to learn, very short learning curve. Uh, what it, what it means to me that we can rely on this as another layer of coverage of insurance when we do procedure, which we previously did just using fluoro. Now we can use this and we get the same advantages as we would with a more cumbersome system like the ORM or any other navigation system you use. So our experience so far has been pretty amazing. Thank you. Uh. Thank you, Dr. Kainan. Uh, another thing I, I can mention for those who wonder, some of those patients were high BMIs, 35, 36. Often we had situations, Dr. Kainan, when uh, the anatomy is hardly visible in the x-rays and yeah, still... Like for, for, S, for S1 screws, we're on AP x-rays. Sometimes we have a hard time finding the, the starting point. This makes things much, much simpler with very little additional, no, little, no additional work, actually. Our next presenter would be Dr. Shaiman Menachem, also from Ramba Medical Center, also one of the investigators in a clinical trial. But Dr. Menachem will talk about uh, lateral lumbar in the body fusion, single position surgery, because we all the time are thinking how to expand the uses and applications of our system. Of course, broadly speaking, it should apply to any skeletal intervention. We have a 3D data and then uh, intra-op x-rays. Uh, but currently our focus is on spine, and you've heard also a lot of talk here on the first day about lateral access. So we thought, wouldn't it be really neat if we enable single position surgery, including when the patient is positioned on the side, just shoot 
patient-wise one AP X-ray to find the pedicle, and then the rest do in uh, patient-wise uh, lateral, so the X-ray is above the operating table, doesn't disturb anyone. Uh, and that we have demonstrated in kind of Eric work, and that's what Dr. Menachem will be uh, discussing. Good morning. Um, so I'll go uh, right to the, uh, to the problem. So uh, as we heard here, and uh, as we know from my clinical practice, uh, lateral surgery is great. Um, I'm trying to do most of my, my cases uh, with interbodies in the lateral position. But uh, one of the major issues is the fact that we need to flip the patient and uh, to put screws in, even when we try to incorporate MIS techniques and not just open. Um, trying to put screws using uh, fluoroscopy or even with navigation can be quite challenging um, with a setup in the OR. And um, every time that uh, I consider putting screws in the lateral position, I, I find myself flipping the patient, wasting all our time. Sometimes it can take even more than an hour in, in, in certain places. And um, uh, what we try to show after we, we've done the, um, the clinical trial and we've seen that uh, the system is working quite well, uh, we ask ourselves if um, is it, is it going to be possible to use the system to put the screws in the lateral position, um, basically minimizing uh, the interaction with the CRM in, in the position that will basically disturb us doing surgery. Uh, so we heard about the view system and the concept, and um, uh, so what we did basically in this cataract study, uh, we tried to uh, uh, evaluate if uh, the system can be useful and accurate and, and comfortable to work uh, when the patient is in the lateral position. Um, so I'll show you the uh, short video. Um, so I think the main issue after we've seen the, the first video of uh, the main difference between uh, positioning the patient in the prone position, using the C arm, uh, mainly in the AP position with a with couple of obliques, is that uh, here after we're doing the, again, same CT scan uh, in the supine position and the planning, uh, doing the pre-op planning uh, with the drag and drop tool, um, which is very easy, it's very intuitive. Um, the main, and as you'll see in the video, um, the main work is gonna be uh, when the C arm is in the AP position, but it's the patient's lateral position, which means that we have a lot of space to work in. So the first, uh, basically the first insertion, the first tapping of the Jamshidi is gonna be in AP just to see where the entry point is. And everything else, all the, all the work that we're doing in changing the uh, trajectory, advancing the tool in, is gonna be in the patient's lateral position, which is as you can see in the movie, we have plenty of space to work. Um, again, it's lateral position and we change between two lateral positions, which is kind of like oblique, so we can get the, the 3D options. Um, same here, we can see we have a bridge. I'm changing the trajectory of the Jamshidi and without changing the position of the C arm, uh, just in the lateral position, um, we can get a new cross section and see that the, basically um, the trajectory is good now and uh, we can continue. And again, the same process, as I'm advancing the Jamshidi into the pedicle, um, so and we take another X-ray, again, in the same position, and there we can see how the tool is, is, is being advanced. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you that in this cadaveric lab, so here we're showing uh, um, higher up screws, but when we've done uh, S1 and L5 screws, um, I couldn't see almost anything on the, on the, on the C-arm, on the X-ray. It was guesswork and um, the system was accurate. It's like I followed the system and relied on it for 100% and it was like perfect. Um, again, because of it's a study, so we done a 3D scan and uh, as you can see here, uh, what the system shows us on the, on the, on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, uh, what we've got from the 3D scan, um, which was 100% perfect. And then also to uh, make sure that after we change uh, the K wires to screws and uh, nothing moves, um, so you'll see the in comparison between the simulation of the screws on the left hand side uh, and uh, the screw themselves on the 3D scan. And again, um, accuracy was perfect. So uh, in conclusion, um, the workflow is very convenient and uh, simple for, uh, for placing screws in the lateral position. Um, comparison of the, of the simulated implant position uh, was perfect uh, in compared to the 3D scan. And um, I think that view system would be a very useful tool for lateral uh, access surgery. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Menachem. Our next speaker will be Dr. Joel Finkelstein from Sunnybrook, Toronto, Canada. Dr. Finkelstein's perspective is different in that he has been introduced to the VIEW system only two months ago, uh, joined us for some uh, cadaveric work that we did in, in Germany, where we do uh, most of our cadaveric work. Uh, we do it in Europe in general. And as Dr. Finkelstein will tell you, um, supposedly it was for learning to use the VIEW system two days two challenging cadavers, about 50 insertions, but uh, no offense, but after like two, three pedicles, he got really bored and said, okay, I got it, let's do some other things. So then we started, I said, what would you like to do? We said, well, let's try concurrent insertions by two users in parallel, save some x-rays. Let's try SI joint, even though it's not in the current indications. Uh, Dr. Finkelstein is interested in cortical screws, so let's try cortical screws. So we did a lot of these. So here, really, you, you, you get a very fresh perspective that has been generated uh, over the past couple of months. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that introduction. You basically said it all. <laughs> and you know, repetition is, you know, is, is very important. So I'm going to repeat a lot of the concepts that have been uh, brought up because it is a novel system. And it, it takes a little bit to get your head around because it really is like magic, as uh, has already said. <laughs> Um, so, you know, thank you for uh, allowing me to uh, present my, uh, my impressions. So um, I have no conflicts with uh, respect to this uh, talk. Um, but I'm just going to give you a background. My current practice is spine surgery. Um, I do a high volume of trauma, uh, degenerative uh, oncology. We use uh, 3D image guidance for the majority of systems uh, for cases, but also use a lot of uh, d fluoro for minimally invasive uh, cases and percutaneous fixations such as flexion distraction injuries. Uh, there are advantages and disadvantages uh, um, in both and most notably in fluoroscopy for pedicle screw placement, visualization is often very difficult with uh, morbidly obese patients, with osteopenia, with um, high deformities. Uh, in these situations, views is very valuable because it really enhances your uh, visibility of the vertebra that you don't really see with the plain x-ray. It converts the plain x-ray, which is often not poorly, is not, is poorly defined, and it creates a, a synthesized 3D image like a CT scan. So you advance your uh, trocars, your jam sheety needle, um, with what seems to be a navigated, uh, similar to a navigated uh, system, but you're using um, AP um, x-ray. So that's a big advantage. So um, what was my first um, experience uh, with this. As uh, David said, I was uh, invited to try this at a cadaver lab and we um, uh, did the uh, workflows and tested different, uh, try to test the system with uh, uh, you know, stressful situations such as uh, high BMI and uh, high deformity. We had a, a very kyphotic uh, uh, cadaver as uh, one example. And we also tested different workflows to see how it would, if it would impair the ability to do what would be standard workflows, having two surgeons work on the same vertebra right and left sides or two concurrent uh, vertebra because we want to be efficient and, uh, and, and not change the way we would normally do workflows. So we did the, um, we inserted 50 percutaneous screws. Uh, the workflow was using standard um, uh, screws and equipment. There was uh, basically generic uh, tools. You don't need any specific tools for the, for the views. Uh, we would obtain the plain AP uh, single or double, create the CD, uh, the CT scan or the, the synthesized CT scan, advance our tool, um, and check the accuracy with a post-procedural CT scan and compare the views synthesized CT scan, which is really based on real-time AP, and that's what you're using. And, and as a gold standard, check it post-insertion to see how accurate it is to a real CT scan. Uh, and that is just for testing of uh, the system. And it was, uh, as mentioned by many others, it is very, uh, very accurate. So we, uh, I wanted to test it further on um, other situations. So again, the concurrent uh, or simultaneous particular insertions left and right sides, uh, two surgeons work at the same time, tried cortical trajectory screws and also lumbosacral fixation with the S2 Ehler screw. Um, and uh, it can be used in both percutaneous as well as open procedures. So concurrent insertions, this was very successful. We had two surgeons. Uh, we have our second surgeons uh, we'll be talking next. Uh, we did simultaneous insertions, so it was very, uh, very efficient and minimizes x-ray exposure. And it's a similar workflow as a routine percutaneous insertion used in a regular C-arm. 
What about cortical trajectory pedicle screws? Um, some people may prefer this as a um, type of fixation. Um, it's an alternative technique for pedicle fixation, and particularly in open procedures. It's useful for osteoporotic bone. It's less invasive. The technique, though, requires good visualization of landmarks, particularly if you're going to use fluoroscopy. Um, uh, I currently use navigation, but with good fluoroscopy and with views, it would be a very simple technique. Um, and the application was easily performed with the views for, uh, in this percutaneous fashion. So here's just a bit of the workflow. Uh, the preoperative planning will, def will define where you would want to put the incision. Um, and it also gives you your docking point where the trocar should be hitting the bone. Uh, this um, x-ray shows we put in traditional screws, and that's when we started getting bored. We wanted to do other applications. So this x-ray is we put a number of traditional screws below, and we're planning now for the cortical trajectory screws. You can see the scalpel is uh, placed here, which is it's meant to be down here, the, uh, the incision site. Um, and so therefore, we would then adjust, get the AP, see that it was not in the right spot to do the incision. We would then adjust the placement of the scalpel and the incision. And now we can make our incision, and we are now accurate. Many times, if we're doing percutaneous fixation in obese patients, we're often not lateral enough, and we're often struggling. We're making incisions bigger than we need to. Uh, need to have um, to maintain a minimally invasive approach. And so this really gives you the ideal insertion or the incision site. So here, this is what the planning. We now have the incision site where, um, where the incision will be. And then you can see the site where the trocar or the jam sheet is supposed to dock on the um, bone at the um, L2 pedicle on the right side. So we get the uh, one AP. Uh, we then will get the second AP and then create the uh, synthesized CT or the synthetic CT scan, and you can see that the um, angle of the jam sheet is incorrect, so we'll adjust that, get another um, X-ray with the adjusted position, get a synthetic, uh, the synthesize the CT, and now we are, we'll accept this position, we'll advance our jam sheet, um, just as you would do with uh, AP and lateral fluoro, you make, make changes, but here you just, it's a lot easier, you don't need any lateral X-rays, you just need the AP X-ray, and you can uh, work on the CT scan. So, in effect, it's almost like we're using navigation. So we'll advance our jam sheety needle um, and follow it with uh, just an AP x-ray until uh, it's at the depth that we want. Uh, we can update it, and you can see this is the, uh, the trajectory that we've decided on, and we've put our jam sheety uh, needle in. And here we'll now check it. So as checking as per a study protocol, we're going to check to make sure that the, the post-surgical insertion or the, the post-procedural insertion position is exactly where we think it should be and it matches the views um, synthetic uh, CT scan. So you can see that the, this is what we use to guide. Here's our post-placement CT scan and, and they're identical in both the axial and the um, sagittal planes. So it was, it's very accurate. Um, it, proved itself to be very accurate in the situation of this uh, obese, and the obese patient and with this high deformity. And placed our screws in, again got the uh, position based on the views, uh, and then on the post-procedure uh, CT scan. You can see they're extremely accurate, they're basically identical. So what about the other application that we wanted to try is the S2 Ailer Iliac screw. Uh, this is useful for adult deformity for distal fixation as opposed to iliac um, fixation. It's also used in trauma for lumbosacral fixation for spinal pelvic dissociation. Here we would do it in an open procedure and if anyone has experience with that, they know that you need precise x-rays with obturator obliques, iliac obliques, or you can use navigation. It's critical to avoid the greater sciatic notch, so you have to be very accurate in your position. Um, MIS techniques, percutaneous uh, insertion has been described for the S2 Ailer Iliac screw, and that's what we did in this um, application. We did a, a percutaneous approach for that. Here we would get, our, we place our trocar, uh, we'd get our AP X-ray, we would then get our second, um, our second AP, and then we can generate our CT scan, or our synthetic, our synthesized view CT scan to check our alignment and our, our positioning. And here you can see that we were quite happy with the trajectory that we chose based on our uh, on the AP. So we went with this and we advanced our trocar across the um, SI joint and got one further x-ray to confirm the position. Uh, we then did our post 
procedure spin, and you can see that the post-surgical 3D scan is identical to the views synthesized um, image where we placed, uh, which we used to place our, place our screw. So again, very accurate in this application. So looking ahead, um, I see much greater applications for percutaneous fixation as well as open surgery where navigation is not available or may not be desired um, or, or, or preferred. Um, views as enhanced visualization with 3D accuracy like navigation, but is using a flat panel X-ray. Enhanced visualization um, when X-ray quality is poor, such as with obese patients, osteopenia, ankylosing spondylitis, and deformities such as kyphosis. Um, further applications would be pure SI joint fusion in a degenerative case, cervical fixation, C2 pedicle screws, and facilitate many other MIS techniques. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Finkelstein. Riva, maybe we can show real quickly. We had a one minute video here of the concurrent insertions. Riva, Riva will run it. That's okay. Uh, just so that you can see it. Uh, so, Dr. Finkelstein is our newest user. And our last speaker after we watch the video will be Dr. Geron Schiffer from Cologne, Germany. And that's exactly the opposite. Dr. Schiffer, in fact, was our first user, uh, our first cadaveric workshop was three years ago in September 2019 at Cadillac Cologne and uh, they just got us and said we'll get you some surgeons and fortunately we had Dr. Schiffer um, and uh, I think we've done five more we've done six cadaveric workshops by now with a variety of surgeons but we always involve Dr. Schiffer as well so he has uh, a very good perspective now okay so that's just one minute video. So as you know, uh, legacy navigation solutions are also sort of one tool at a time. And uh, we don't have that limitation here. I and mean, if you can see multiple tools in the X-ray images, you can guide all of them concurrently, be they, as Dr. Finkelstein said, left and right on the same vertebra or two adjacent vertebrae or whatever. And that certainly can have, it, can have advantages in terms of uh, time, radiation, et cetera. So you can see we did both left and right sides and made our adjustments based on the single AP each time and similar as you would do with regular uh, fluoroscopy, just, you know, being as efficient as possible. And we didn't get each other way, each other's way. Worked out well, didn't we? Yeah, you got along well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So our last speaker is Dr. Schiffer. We have 10 minutes. So maybe we'll have time for some questions, maybe not, but most important is to hear Dr. Schiffer's presentation really with a perspective of three years uh, escorting us in our development of the view system. Yes, thanks David. Good morning everybody. It's all a pleasure to speak here and to represent good old Europe and Germany in this uh, issue. So whenever I have, I'm confronted to a new technology, I ask me the question, is it just a new technology and it's, maybe it's nice to look at or might it have the potential to change uh, things in uh, the field of operation surgery I'm going. So to be honest, uh, mentioner, uh, David already mentioned, I have a conflict of interest as I, as I get paid for helping views, uh, but I can assure you I'm, I'm not a stakeholder of the company, so I can give you my free opinion and my experience and my um, 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 uh, things I, I get to know. So my personal background in navigation is I have done the spine surgery for 20 years, most of them trauma surgery, uh, no degenerative cases, and I did a lot of navigation uh, using the brain lip system. So uh, it's always difficult to estimate. In the most uh, cases, you you think you, had, you did much more, but maybe it's around 2,000 surgeries during these years. And the first 10 years, I did everything navigated, uh, 3D marker, marker based navigated. And when I s changed to another small hospital, so I had no navigation system. So I had to come back to X-ray uh, guided surgery. 
And uh, the other thing I want to mention, I, I did a lot of them, minimally invasive, and um, so I participated on the workshop since uh, 2019. So when I did the uh, marker-based navigation, I can admit I, I really loved it because it made, made it possible to do things in complicated cases which I wouldn't be able to do with just X-ray surgery. But to be honest, I'm telling the whole story. You all know who use these systems the marker-based navigation has some hazards you have to face, so we have the, always can be the problem of loose reference clamps. The visibility of markers can be reduced. Uh, you have to think a lot about the setup in the OR with the camera, the patient, and the X-ray, and so on. And uh, so we need quite a severe change of the workflow when using nav uh, marker-based navigation. And so. In my experience, it's quite a challenging learning curve. You need quite a lot of cases to be to trust the system, to be sure that it works. And uh, especially in the beginning, it's quite time consuming and the speed, which is not so unimportant in our business, is going down. And sometimes you have to depend on specific implants and instru instruments, which, which is a situation I do not prefer. So, but as David already said, the most of the cases, approximately 80%, are not so difficult cases are cases short segment, thoracolumbar, and maybe we have X, nice X-rays like that, where uh, we have a pedicle uh, entrance point like the gates of a, of a large ranch. So um, that's always the question when I, and I know a lot of colleagues ask themselves, well, isn't hardware-based navigation a little bit too much? Is it not a little bit too much effort? Is it too much costs? And is it too much time? So. And on the other hand, I'm, I think you will fully agree that shouldn't we go for highest possible accuracy for minimal invasive? I personally, I hate the open approach. I try to do it minimally invasive if ever possible. And shouldn't we go for the best practice or best available quality for our patient? So that's, in my opinion, where the view system can really change the game, because as you already heard, it provides a high accuracy and definitely a less radiation. And yet, you don't need reference clamp markers, you don't need a camera, you don't need lateral images, you don't even need a 3D C arm if you are happy with that. And the workflow, as also Joel mentioned, is quite unchanged. Um, you do have just the uh, you have just a PC, a small physical space, and no extra preparations. Compared to marker-based navigation, you have one disadvantage: that means that the tool position is updated incrementally. It's not continuously. So, not if you're moving something, you see the the picture changing. But to be honest, that's the workflow we all use. If you see uh, X-ray guidance, we do something. We take an X-ray. We do something. We take an X-ray. So. In my opinion, so the system provides you a lot of freedom and independence. You don't, uh, you don't, you do not uh, get addicted to a certain uh, manufacturer, either uh, implant or C arm. You have no additional single-use material. You use only the EAP views, and that makes sterile draping much easier. And the X-ray tube is under the table where it belongs to prevent you and your staff from uh, receiving too much radiation. So, already mentioned, when I introduce the system to other surgeons, for example, Joel Finkelstein, we find out that it's very intuitive. So, it just takes one or two levels to get them know how the system is working. And as David already said, well, well Joel, you had quite a jet lag from coming from Toronto, but you were very bored after two levels. So, and he's asked, well, let's try something else. So, was already mentioned, the incision site planning, where to put your incision, it's perceived as very helpful, because you all know if you've done it on the wrong position, you have to extend your incision. So it's much a great help to know where to put your scalpel on. And you see a rapid progress in confidence. So altogether, I, I perceived a very easy learning curve, not only for me, but, only, but also for the colleagues. To be honest, it was a quite artificial situation. We had a patient who couldn't complain anymore, and we had very talented and experienced surgeons who I taught that system. So, altogether, the question is, my, or might the view system be a game changer in minimal invasive spine surgery? In my opinion, yes. Uh, of course, the accuracy with the colleagues from Israel are about to test in clinical trials must be proven to, uh, to be sure that the system works. 
the company has to maintain the compatibility with the current C arms. Um, we have to keep this simplicity to be uh, to get the most of out of it, and uh, the system, of course, should be offered at competitive prices. Um, I'm sure that we are able to reduce some reduction as we only have AP views and less radiation than in conventional X-ray guidings. So I think, yes, there is a potential of changing the game. And thank you for your attention. And uh, please, if you come to Cologne, don't miss to visit the cathedral. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Schiffer. And we have actually five minutes.